It was mid-October. In case you didn't know, mid-October was really great weather for hiking. Not too cold, not too hot. A true median, weather-wise. The kind of temperature that requires a jacket, but not necessarily a hat or scarf or anything like that. I was headed out to the mountains, just above Newton Ransom, Pennsylvania. An area of wilderness composed mostly of massive golden fields and thick, dense forest filled to the brim with conifers. It was great country for photography, which is what I was planning on doing with my newly purchased Sony A7S. It had a great dynamic range, which made it a great choice for some nature shots. Driving down the windy, rarely traveled road along the cusp of Bald Mountain, I noticed how the trees appeared as black veins, silhouetted against the soft autumn sky. Funny how you never notice things until you're by yourself, sitting alone in your truck cab, listening to the smooth, offbeat sounds of Ziggy Stardust while your Marlboro burns to the nub and you're limply sitting out the window left hand. Once I was certain that I was indeed in the middle of nowhere, I pulled my truck to a stop on the side of the road, flicking my cigarette onto the asphalt. I took my bag and camera and slammed the door. I didn't even bother locking it. Nobody would be breaking into my truck out here. I slung my bag over my shoulder and headed out into the flora, stepping over fallen trees and copious amounts of ferns. A breeze kicked up a fury of dead leaves, encircling my body in a palpable sign of fall. The smell of a distant fire filled my nostrils. Over the course of the next two hours, amidst the oncoming dusk, I grabbed some great shots, mostly of the barren forest canopy, but also of a few squirrels. Very exciting, I know. I continued on my trek, journeying further and further amongst the trees, until I came upon something. Something weird. A circus tent. I swear to God, a circus tent. Have you ever seen killer clowns from outer space? It was like that. But not alien looking or anything, just a normal broken down circus tent. The main support pole in the center of the tent had torn through, propping the tent up by a mere strand of persistent fabric. Instantly, I started taking pictures, not just because it would make for a cool shot, but also because I knew my friends wouldn't believe me. I know I wouldn't believe something like this. Not a chance. The flash on the camera turned the side of the tent completely white, washing out the already faded red and white stripes. One more photo and I was going to see what was going on inside. Slowly, I made my way into the interior of the tent walking over shattered pop bottles and rusted bottle caps. I was now inside, inside of the circus tent in the middle of the woods. It was massive, almost the length of a football field. I had no idea it was going to be this big. Besides the sheer massiveness, it was nearly pitch black. The only light in the tent came through the hole in the roof, and even that was dim, being that it was well into dusk. On the far side of the tent sat a rusted set of bleachers, right next to a huge pile of hay. I assumed the hay was to feed the animals, or perhaps as a means for safety, in case a trainer was flung by an elephant or something big like that. I walked into the center of the ring, stepping up on a stool that sat dead center in the middle of the dirt. I was the ringleader. I couldn't resist. I had to say something. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the show. Please keep your arms and legs, wait, please stay in your seats, for these animals you're about to see are dangerous. I couldn't help but laugh to myself. I quickly snapped a shot of me, holding the camera far above my head, making a weird face while standing on the ringleader stool. And then I noticed something another room on the far side of the tent. A faint light seemed to emanate from it. I jumped down off the stool and made my way over, clutching the camera tight in my hand to ease my nerves. I had left my cigarettes in the car. 
I pushed the flap open, stepping into the small room. It was filled with all sorts of equipment and posters. Large light rigs, hula hoops, bales of hay, makeup stands. The large poster hanging from the ceiling depicted the smiling visage of a clown. In large red letters it read, Come see Happy the Clown, only at the famous Borning Brothers Circus. The poster was obviously from the 50s, at the earliest. It was faded and ripped in most areas. I crept over to it, attempting to get a better shot. I had to up the ISO due to poor lighting, going past my comfort max of 800, all the way up to 1600. I at least wanted to make up for the noise in the image by getting a closer shot. Eh, that shot was just okay. The flash illuminated something behind the thin paper poster. Something figure-like. Like a human shape. There it was again. From the brief glimpse I got, it didn't seem to be moving. No, it definitely wasn't moving. But one more, just to be sure. Ever so slowly, I made my way around the side of the poster, closing my eyes in fear of being hacked to pieces by some nut job wielding a machete, or maybe my ex-wife. It wasn't my ex-wife, it was something far creepier, and there's a reason I say was. Not just because I'm recounting something, but this thing was dead. A clown, in a clown suit. Or what was a clown? The only thing that remained now was a skeleton. The red nose and red wig still stuck to its skull, its jaw unhinged and hanging low. I surmised this was the infamous Happy, the Happy from the poster, the Happy who probably made balloon animals and had those hand buzzer things. A noose clung tight to its neck, a kicked over stool sat beneath its feet. The rope was tied to one of the tent support beams. I brought out my cell phone, sliding my finger across the screen to turn it on. But no, just like the convenient oh no my phone is dead moment in modern horror movies, I must have left Twitter on. Twitter always drains your battery. I could tell the moon was out. The top of the tent had an eerie white glow, which cast down upon the clown. His face washed in a ray of stark, pale white. My camera had died, too. This was peculiar. I remember charging it before I left, and I had only taken 15 shots, max. Drawing my attention away from the camera was the sound of a record player. Rickety, scratchy, old. A creepy melody started to fill the tent sending my heart racing into my throat. Happy the clown, the funniest around. He'll turn that frown right upside down. Rain or shine, no matter the time. He'll make you laugh on the spin of a dime. I turned my head towards the black abyss, the abyss where the sound was coming from. But my gaze was broken when I heard a creak, the creaking of bones the tightening of a rope. I shot my head back, and to my horror, the clown was dancing. I was so overwhelmed that I tripped, falling onto my back. Like a macabre marionette, Happy's bony arms flailed around. His jaw clacked up and down, seemingly singing to the lyrics. So don't be shy, girl or guy. Happy the clown won't make you cry. His legs kicked and swayed, the giant clown shoes shining under the ray of moonlight. He clapped his hands together, the sound of bones hitting off one another. I had seen enough. I jumped to my feet and bolted towards the exit I saw on the side of the room. Outside the tent, I frantically searched for which way to go, but I knew there was no time to actually decide, so I ran straight. I ran in the moonlight past large animal cages, the skeletal remains of elephants and giraffes laying on the dirt floors. At the far end of the property was a giant rusted ferris wheel, strands of light still wrapped around its metal frame. 
It sparked to life, starting to move as the light slowly zapped on and off, on and off, on and off. The circus PA system slammed on. A happy, sweet tune filled the air. A carnival tune. The canned laughter of an audience reverberated. I had to get out. This was the most terrified I'd ever been in my life. Every pore on my skin emitted sweat. My heart felt as if it was about to burst from my chest, like a chest burster from Alien. I twirled around, back toward the tent, and there he stood, Happy the Clown, the noose still tied around his bony neck. He slowly approached, his jaw hanging low. As if he was trying to smile, he moved his mouth up and down, up and down, up and down. Dead leaves danced around his body in the night breeze. His figure silhouetted against the pale harvest moon. I darted for the woods, clutching onto my camera so as to not lose it. I needed a cigarette after this. I needed 12 cigarettes. I didn't look back. Not even as I heard the sound of clown shoes crunching leaves and branches. Not even when I heard a low, cheery laugh. I wasn't looking back. I've never been to a circus since, nor can I even bring myself to watch JoJo Circus reruns with my daughter. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. Be good to animals, even people. See ya. Happy the clown here. <laughs> but also of a few squirrels. Very exciting. <laughs> She's mad because I said squirrels. I'm reading a story.